When it comes to trying out new games, the early stages can often make or break the experience. They can halt games entirely, seeming so tedious and laborious that players simply can't go on. Ideally, they should engage us in special ways, making us eager for more. But sometimes the early stages aren't all that reflective of the full package, so we've compiled a list that discusses 10 of the greatest games that start off really awful. Divinity Original Sin is an RPG title that offers competitive turn-based combat, a beautifully rendered world, and a compelling storyline. But as many other games on this list, it also suffers from a not-so-exciting start. Some quests need to be completed before you'll be able to roam freely around the map, and a number of gamers constantly complain about this aspect, feeling that it's a bit too much to spend several hours in the main city completing all kinds of tasks before you get to the real nitty-gritty of the game. Persona 4 is a highly appreciated role-playing game, but it takes a while until you can fully enjoy its gameplay. If you're the type of gamer that appreciates fast-paced action scenarios, then you should know that this gaming title starts off annoyingly slow, with a lot of dialogue and not so much combat. Even though it's a truly enjoyable game, Persona 4 tests your patience for quite a long time, many people giving up on it after the first hour of gameplay. The original Witcher title has a tutorial that works as a total turn-off for many gamers. In fact, it's so terrible that it makes you put down the controller and walk away in sheer frustration. Even though it was conceived to teach you the fundamentals of combat and controlling the game, it feels like more of a challenge than a proper tutorial. And because of this, some players even decided to ignore the game completely, missing out on the opportunity to play a really nice and iconic title. Kingdom Heart 2's intro isn't all that bad, but the first time you play it can be quite confusing, and it just doesn't do itself justice like it should. Perhaps after a couple of runs, or even just one, it all becomes a little clearer and easier to appreciate, but even then, it doesn't feel like a real beginning, but more of a re-beginning. An otherwise good game, Kingdom Hearts 2 really loses some of its audience's attention with the repetitive scenarios from the intro. In the earliest stages of Mass Effect, players can feel overwhelmed by the game's mechanics and the task of getting used to them. As a result, the gameplay feels like it's not advancing at all, the Citadel becoming the most hated location since you have to spend so much time exploring it. Thankfully, Mass Effect 2 has a much better pacing, but it's a shame that the first title's quality is hindered by such a superficial issue like a slow start. Most role-playing games have a slow start where the player needs to gather materials to craft better weapons and equipment, the quests tending to be really tedious and repetitive until you reach a certain level. Dragon Age Origins isn't an exception, and even though it's a fairly good gaming title, its intros may prove to be dull and uninteresting for the players that want to jump right into the action. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is definitely a great game, but the one single thing that irked so many players was the fact that for the first few hours you'd have to wander around doing mundane, unexciting tasks. You'll be herding goats, fishing and running all kinds of other errands until you'll be able to fully enjoy the game and get your hands on the Master Sword that will really change the whole gameplay style. Okami's problems lie in the fact that for the first part of the game, you're forced to sludge through a painfully large amount of boring dialogue, a ton of tedious mini-quests, and other such dreary events. Okami's intro is so incredibly boring that people are put off from ever replaying the game, literally to avoid those annoying chores that seem to take forever. Thankfully, the rest of the game greatly compensates for the slow beginning. Dubbed the greatest Star Wars game by some critics, Jedi Knight 2 is also famed for its annoyingly sluggish start that made many gamers back off from the entire gameplay, which is a pity. Also, the gameplay includes a bit too much puzzle solving for some players' tastes and making the entire experience feel boring and kind of motionless. However, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast still remains a prized title that should be tried by every person who calls themselves a gamer.
all of the Metal Gear Solid games are known for their lengthy cutscenes, and even though we can't overlook their importance in establishing a context for the gameplay, they definitely do test your patience. Sometimes, especially in the beginning, you just want to see if the game's style fits your preferences so that you'll know if it's worth continuing, but in Metal Gear Solid 3 you'll have to sit through 30 plus minutes of cutscenes and senseless missions until you're able to actually dive into the gameplay. Except for its slow start, Metal Gear Solid 3 is a really great game, as are all of the other titles in the franchise. This was our list showcasing some great games that start off really awful, and we hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please press that like button as we do appreciate it and it helps us immensely. We often ask our audience for suggestions to compile these lists, and if you'd like to contribute, please follow Frag Hero on Facebook. If you've played other similar games, please mention them in the comments below because we do try to read pretty much everything. Now would also be a great time to encourage you to subscribe because we upload new stuff all of the time, so subscribing will keep you up to date with all of our latest videos. You can also check out FragHero.com for more gaming-related articles but until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.